The lawsuit is aimed at keeping families together, with many parents believing their children were taken away by Child Protective Services illegally, based on allegations that weren't true and were often completely and totally fabricated. Dwight Mitchell didn't see his son for almost two years, and it all started with a spanking. My former wife told my son that if I ever spanked him to call and, and tell the police. Based on the one spanking, Mitchell says Dakota County Child Protective Services took his three children from him and charged him with malicious punishment of a child. After five months, CPS returned my six-year-old and my 15-year-old son to me, but refused to return my 11-year-old son. Mitchell said two CPS psychologists said he was fit to parent and that CPS was ordered by several judges to reunify him with his 11-year-old son. But instead, CPS tried to terminate his parental rights altogether. Eventually, CPS did dismiss the case and return his son to him. But it had been 22 months with no contact. Hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dwight Mitchell. And I'm the founder of Family Preservation Foundation and the parental rights group Stop CPS from Legally Kidnapping Children. First and foremost, I want to thank all of you for your continued support. We couldn't have gotten here without you. Now it's time for an update on our federal civil rights lawsuit against CPS on our upcoming rally in March. As some of you know, Oral arguments are scheduled before the Eighth Circuit United States Court of Appeals in St. Paul, Minnesota on March 11, 2020. So let's get ready to rumble. The David versus Goliath legal battle rages on in federal court after almost two years of fighting. Our lawyer Eric Cardell, a two-time winner at the U.S. Supreme Court in Washington, D.C., is prepared for our upcoming civil rights fight. These, are, these people are wailing. They're crying about losing their children permanently or temporarily. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with the Department of Human Services that you're doing this to these people? You're grabbing their kids without any constitutional basis and you're keeping them, some of them permanently. This state agency better wake up. Our attorney will be arguing the following key points before the appellate court. One. Stop CPS from legally kidnapping children is a legitimate association with standing to bring about a federal lawsuit on behalf of our members, just like the NAACP and the ACLU. Two, per the Eighth Circuit decision on August 10, 2018, it is well-established law that is unconstitutional to seize a child without a reasonable suspicion of child abuse. Three. Minnesota's child protection statutes have constitutional deficits in that they do not require a government to show parental harm to the child prior to seizing the child from the family home. Four, Minnesota child protection statutes fail to follow the national trend of excluding ordinary corporal punishment from the definition of abuse. Five, Minnesota's child protection workers do not have immunity if they seize or remove your child from their family home without a court order, without evidence of child abuse, and it's well established that lying and or presenting false evidence to the court in order to remove a child from the family home is perjury, illegal, and would deprive the parents of their constitutional rights. Now, having said all this, we need everyone to take off for work and come down to the rally in the federal courthouse to hear the argue arguments. <clears throat> we want you to understand what's going on, so come on down on March 11, 2020 to show your support and help change the laws relating to CPS. We need to fill the courtroom. We need to know what we want. Details are on the blog section of our website, familypreservationfoundation.org, and our Facebook page under the events tab. We need to show this three judge panel that parents demand their constitutional rights be upheld as it relates to CPS policies, practices, and procedures. We will take this battle all the way to the US Supreme Court if necessary. Our parental association, which is named as a party in the lawsuit, is over 9,000 members strong and growing daily. 
We will continue to need your support, both financially and spiritually. The wheels of justice turn slowly. Federal lawsuits are expensive and take years to complete. You must remember, constitutional cases affect the liberty and state of our nation. Before closing, for those of you who are not aware, Family Preservation Foundation has completed the first 10 educational videos of the CPS Defense Help Kit and they're on our website. The next video educational series will be on how we won the Amanda Weber case against CPS in less than 90 days. We will also include the court paperwork filings as part of the handout so you can see exactly what we did in detail and educate yourself on what to do. The first 10 videos, as I said before, can be viewed on our website under the educational menu. The PDF handouts can be downloaded also so you can read them online or together with the video. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or our Facebook page to stay updated. I'll see you at the rally and thanks for being a part of the team and the fight against CPS.